Hello, thanks for joining me. I've just parked my larder up here at Crockham Woods in County Durham. I've been up here with the IFA Club with our trip around the North East. This is the final video I'm going to make in this area before driving home. This is Welcome to Crockham Wood. Down here is the River Weir and on the other side of the River Weir is Finkel Priory. So we're going to go and explore the ruins of Finkel Priory. So as I said, I've been up here with the IFA Club. We had a great road run around Northumberland. We've been to Tanfield Railway, we've been to Beamish, we've been to the Rail Museum at Darlington and obviously various other places. Now it's time for the long drive home, but I just had to stop here because it wasn't too far and it was just it just made a perfect stop really. So let's go down these steps and explore the ruins of Finkel Priory. I'm um, making my way down these steps through the woods. The steps at this point take on a bit of a zigzag going down, down there. We're going to eventually end up down there. I can start to see glimpses of the ruins of Finkel Priory in the distance. It's spelt Finch Ale but um, it's pronounced Finkel, so it's Finkel Priory. It is uh, also known as Finkel Abbey. It's the daughter house of Durham Priory, which is also known to most people as Durham Cathedral. So as we take another hip in Bend, I can, um, this was winter, you will probably get a good view of it now, but the leaves are blocking that view, but we should see it very soon, coming down towards the River Weir. Interestingly, the sea is that way, the river weir is flowing that way, so it's taking a very windy course out towards the sea. We come down this pass here that we're joining appears to run along the river weir. And there, on the other side of the river, are the ruins of Finkel Priory. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go across the river weir and explore the ruins. Um, I've never been to this, this priory before, I've been to quite a few the most recent priory I visited was um, Hexham, which of course is very different. It's now a parish church. So that was very interesting. If you want to see that video, have a look at the link on screen now. There's a link to um, video at Hexham, um, where I explored the whole town of Hexham. So here we are, the River Weir. And there's the priory in front of us. So, as I say, I always enjoy visiting any form of um, abbey or priory or castle. I just enjoy visiting historic sites really. This is really nice though. It reminds me a bit of my visit last year to Bolton Abbey. So it's a hot day, there's people swimming in the river. Last year I visited Bolton Abbey, that, that was another good day out. Um, so as we approach here there's a, there's a tea room here, a toilet, so I parked up there. There is a bigger car park and campsite down here so you could park there but I thought it would be a nice walk down through the trees up there so that's why we came the way we did. So here we are. Finch Ale Priory. It's English heritage. It is free to visit. Um, that's where you can get tea etc. Ice creams. So let's go and have a look around the ruins. So there's the church up there behind us. So it's a perfect setting, like you get quite a lot of abbeys. Like I said, I mentioned Bolton Abbey, it reminds me a bit of Tinton Abbey, not as much the building itself, but the setting. So I believe this dates back to um, 1537 they started building it. Sorry, not 1537, 1536 was when it was dissolved. 1237 they started building um, the current ruins, the current building you see. That's the church just there, we'll go and have a look. And it was finished in 1239. It was um, dissolved in 1536. I believe it was dedicated um, to a saint. Name slipped my mind, but it's coming on screen now. I don't believe he ever came here. It was when he died they set up this, uh, this uh, priory in his honour. But the original priory was about a mile along the river and it was just a little wooden hut. That eventually became just a chapel and then the current um, church was built. So it stands to fairly, um, I wouldn't say quite to full height, but um, you know, the ruins are quite substantial. What's interesting here is quite a lot of the ruins do survive, at least all the foundations survive. So on the whole, we can see pretty much everything, get a fairly good idea. So that would have been the chancel of the church. So. I said looking east towards the sea, although the River Weir is actually flowing that way. North transept is here. 
So from the north transit, you can see out out through to um, the weir. That's the building where I said you can buy teas and coffees. There's the south transept. Well, look, there would have been in this column here. There was a spiral staircase, but um, it doesn't go very far. And I'll just let you see that. So there's a locked door. So this is the south transept here. And then this is um, the main nave of the church. So if you imagine big vaulted ceiling above us. And the road ahead of us, that's where if you come by car, I said that is another route in, and if you were to camp in the car park, it's part there. So let's have a look. There's the side of the church. Again, the building where you can get a cup of tea. It's also the booking office for the campsite. Here's the front of the church. So that's like the grand doors into the church. So imagine pilgrims arriving here, and they would have been, imagine the huge facade which would have greeted them. What's around here? Can we go? So um, there's various I'm sort of fenced in. Oh, look, there's a room with a vaulted ceiling. What I'm going to do, I'm going to walk around and find our way into there because that looks interesting. So, yeah, again, the front of the church. Let's go through this little door here. One thing I find quite fascinating is the way the stone has weathered and you get all these interesting shapes. So this room we're in here, you can see the vaulted ceiling would have once, so there'd have been another arch to there and to that far corner, so you can imagine it'd have completely been vaulted now. We come back out here, this is the cloisters of the abbey. That's the abbey church, so they, the walls survive higher on that side than they do on this side, so I'm just walking around the edge of the cloister now. We'll have a look in the building up here. So, um, where does this door? Ever since I was a child, though, I've always enjoyed cutting in and out every little door. Oh, that's where we were a moment ago. The room with a vaulted ceiling. Let's go back through here. And get another view across the cloisters. That's the chapter house there. Um, so we're going to have a look at that when we get round there. Right, so we're going up some steps now. What do we? Find? It's interesting. A rather large room. This is probably the refectory. There's a little room there. I'm not going to go next. I'm not in there. I'm guessing this is the refectory. What's through here? And we come through to here. Yeah, there's that um, vaulted ceiling building again. Let's go back. And there's also, um, so there's like a path down there. I wonder if we can, looks like we can go down there. So we'll go and have a look. You can see from here though, see how there's a fireplace. So where I'm standing, whether this isn't the, I would have thought this is the original height because I think I know what's beneath here. But um, so it must have been quite, my head must have been about where the ceiling is, but you can clearly see a fireplace just there. Now, if we go through to here, uh, this is the refectory. So um, this is where the monks We've probably sat in two long tables and eaten their meals. I, I did actually visit a functioning monastery in France a few years ago, and it was, um, wasn't quite as big as this. It was an old farm that had been converted to a monastery, and um, I stayed in the guest house. But I went into the room, and I did see two tables, and the monks were all dressed very similar to how they would have been. This was a Benedictine monastery. I can't remember what the order was of that one, but they would have probably sat in two rows and they would have eaten their meals. Usually they eat their meals in silence, so um, that's probably why I didn't join them, because I probably would have just chatted to them. So you can see some steps there, remains of some steps. So they probably gone up above that arch to a room, but I believe this would have been a much taller room. There probably was a floor above it, going by the windows. But I think what we should do now is have a look at what's below. It's uh, back to the cloisters. You can see some steps going down there. So this looks rather interesting. That we've got to go in here. Now we're descending. Oh, and it's nice and cool in here. It's a rather hot day today. Here we are. So we're now beneath the refectory. So as I was saying about vaulted ceiling earlier, here we have a perfect surviving example of a vaulted ceiling. It's a bit cold and it's a bit damp down here, but as I said, it's a hot day, so I'm quite happy to come down here for a couple of minutes. 
We've got a door there, you see the back takes us. And then um, we'll continue to explore the rest of the monastery. Once I've explored the monastery, I have got a long, long drive south in my larder, going back to Buckinghamshire tonight. So this is my final video from my little trip to the North East. I've gone completely white. And, yeah, there we go. Right, so uh, the cloisters is there. Let's just go around here. So this is what, yeah, we could see from, we were just up there. That's the refectory. And a moment ago, the room above the ceiling is in these windows here. So, um, right, let's, yes, we could, let's, that would take us back to the weir. So let's go down this way. I'm trying to make sure I show you at least all of the important buildings. I don't want to miss anything out. This is what I wanted to see. This would have been the chapter house here. So the chapter house, for those of you who don't know, was basically a room, not where they had anything religious, but where they would have had meetings, discussed um, finances of the monastery, etc. Quite often chapter houses are square in shape with a door with two windows each side. Sometimes they can be um, octagonal. Quite often, if you go to most cathedrals these days, you will be able to have a look at the chapter house if there's not a function being held in. So there's various rooms here. Let's go, oh, this is, yeah. Interesting. So we go to here, this, again, talking of two um, floors, you can see a clear line. So there'd have been another floor above me, and it would have been the dormitory, because this sign here says so. So the dormitory would have been above here. I'm not quite sure it would have been down here. So the monks probably would have made their way from the refectory after dinner up to the dormitory, up to bed. They probably went to bed very early, because I remember when I did stay at that monastery in France, um, some of the monks, they would be up at four o'clock, and um, they would go to bed, you know, at about, they'd probably have dinner at about six o'clock, maybe go to bed at seven o'clock. Um, when I was at that monastery, I then went to Lourdes and had a look around there. Not so much that I'm religious, I just found it something I wanted to do and explore. And when I got to Lourdes, I was then more interested in a funicular railway. Um, so, but that's all. That was a few years ago I did that trip. I'll have to, um, one day I'll find the videos of all that. I made them all and upload them. Anyway, um, so we can't go into that room down there. So, oh, we're in the kitchen now. So, if you can imagine, people kitchen, probably fish from the river, chickens maybe, and they would have taken them over there to the dormitory for the monks to eat. What does this, what does this take us? So we're coming to, so there's more, more buildings that way. We will go and explore all of them as well. And the river weir is just down there. You get from this angle there, you get a nice view of the monastery, the cloisters, the quite substantial remains of the church. And um, what I want to show you is this room, go to here, and obviously we can't go any further because you can see the floor's gone. But what we were in over there, beneath the refectory, would have been like this. So this is where the vaulted ceiling hasn't survived. You can see a section of it over there has survived, so we'll go and have a look at that. Let's, let's make our way down into there, though, I think. Um, because that would be quite interesting to see it from the lower levels. So we'll go, let's go down these steps, a bit of modern steps here, just to get us in and out. So again, chapter house, that would be the south transept. There's no really real windows on the south transept because there were buildings up against them. I think, I might be wrong here, I think this corridor here is what's called a slight. It's like a corridor. I'm saying that because when I went to Croxton Abbey a couple of years ago, if you want to see that video, do have a look at Link on Stream now. The slight was in the, about the same position between the chapter house and the various other monastic buildings. Okay, so we are coming along here. We were there a moment ago on that side of the wall. So um, this is that same. I said I was going to take you down into it. What I've actually done, we were literally there. We've come to there, but we've got to find our way down to there. There's a door just there, I think. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, so if we go out this door, yeah, let's just find it so exciting exploring monasteries. You just never know what's going to take you where. So, yes, yeah, uh, the church. So, that would have been the chancel, south transept, go down here. And um, those, that's where we were. We've just been to those two doors. And you can see the remains of the vaulted ceiling. Some now in this room here, which I'm not entirely sure what it was. There are so many different rooms. Here 
um, in mon monasteries. It, but as I've said, I'm really happy to find a monastery where a lot of it survives. Because so many monasteries you go to, you might get just one part that survives to high walls. And those other parts don't. Ooh, more steps to... Um, so we've now been... We've been to both those windows, or doors rather, and we have been down there. Now we're up here. So um, let's just uh, almost finish looking around the Abbey. That, that room there that we couldn't get into, it looks like um, your way in would be down through that grid and there's an arch under there. I'm not going to obviously do that. Let's go back down here and along into that doorway there because that looks quite exciting. So we did a moment ago come up out of those steps. Gives you an idea actually looking at these. You can see the construction of the stone windows. So um, I try and picture, whenever I come to these places, I do try and picture what they would have looked like. Um, so this would have looked not so much, probably would have looked more like um, just like a, a maybe a farmhouse as such. Um, the walls weren't, the windows weren't so gothic as such, they're probably more squared off, etc. Um, this above here. We've been the prize chapel. So, yeah, as I was saying, that, that was various other buildings. The church was over there. So I suppose the prior, perhaps these were effectively his quarters, but the prize chapel, chapel would have been above. Oh, look at that. That's cool. The remains of a spiral staircase. See up there? So the prior probably, and then he could have gone up further. So, yeah, the prize chapel was above. You can see the window from there. So the chance of the prize chapel would have been up there. Now let's go back out here. We have various other little walls of ruins. Um, oh, now that's interesting. This is probably my guess, but if you look at, see down there, that line of, I reckon that's covering a drain. So um, the lavatories were probably, possibly even here, um, probably w went out to River Weir. If we can find an easy way down, let's go down to, um, let's see if we can work that one out. So there you get a bit more of the spiral staircase where the tower's effectively fallen and exposed it. I reckon, yeah, I can see it now. That, I'm pretty sure that's a drain because just above it I can see um, like an arch that had gone down here. I think I've answered my own question, there's like a hole here. When I was little, I used to go, the drains at Tinton Abbey, you could actually, were quite big. I used to get in it, I was quite small at the time, and I'd crawl through and come out in another one. Whether I'd still be able to do that, I don't know. I've not been to Tinton Abbey since I was a child, but... Um, Really would love to go to it again. We will do it one day. There's a lot of miniature railways near Tintin Abbey. So, um, yeah, it's a holiday in the making for me and a whole series of videos in the making of Tintin Abbey, I think. That would have been the front of the church again. Let's just go into this building here. That's the one part of the abbey, um, or priory rather, even though it's known as an abbey, that we haven't yet explored. So we'll go in there, find our way up to it. So again, various other ruins. That's the bridge we came in. Now I've got to walk up there to find my car, ready for the long, long drive south. Okay, so we come, one thing I'm not sure about, if anyone watching would like to comment and tell me, is we've got the church over there. I wonder what would have been in this area here, whether it had just been an outdoor sort of grassy area. Um, okay, so we go, well this looks exciting. Ah, so the prior study, as I said, this would have been the prior's quarters. This would have been like a little barrel vaulted room, not so much the fancy vaulted ceiling we saw, but so this prior study would have been above here. So you can imagine the prior sitting up there, um, probably with, um, you know, dipping his feather into ink and writing books. Um, that's how it would have been in those days, yeah. So there's another room with a barrel sort of vault. That um, remains of a spiral staircase, I can see. That was out there. So it's a shame we can't go up there, but it probably would be a bit dangerous. So above here, it actually all survives. See so if we can just have a look at that. We come through into here. We've been round, yeah, we've been round here, haven't we? We come back to, yeah. So the prize chapel's above there. So the, we're basically below the prize quarters. This one doesn't go. I'm trying to get back. Let's go the way we came. Or no, that's the window. I'm trying to get back out to where the church was. Back to the prize study. There's the church and all its glory. Off we go. These steps here. Up here. Up these steps. And now we're back into the prize quarter. 
and you get perfect view over the church. So um, the Priors Chapel would have been through here. This part of the Priors Quarter, the Priors Study would have been ground at the level I'm at here. That's looking out to the River Weir. There's been a spiral staircase down there. So I think really that concludes my visit to this um, beautiful ruined priory in County Durham on the banks of the River Weir. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment if you're up this way. You know, do come and visit. It is free to visit. You can get a cup of tea. There are toilets. So it's a good place to break a journey, just like I'm doing. So hope you enjoyed my whole um, visit to the North East County Durham my trips around with the IFA club and the other little visits like this I managed to um, engineer in. Thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to like, subscribe and comment from Finkel Priory. Goodbye.